Hi everyone, welcome back to Collodion Basics. Today's installment should be a fun one because we get to talk about every photographer's favorite subject, equipment. Now if you've watched wet plate videos before, you've probably seen a lot of unfamiliar and potentially expensive looking equipment, and you may be under the impression that it's going to cost you a lot of money in gear acquisition to get started in wet plate. And while you can spend quite a bit of money getting started in wet plate, and you will probably need to acquire some equipment, uh, you don't have to spend nearly as much as some people think that you do. So what I want to talk about today are some of the things that you may want to buy, some of the things you may need to buy, but also some things that you may be able to avoid buying and use cheaper or do-it-yourself versions of if you want to save some money or if you're just looking to limit your investment before figuring out if you really want to go full bore into the process. So let's go ahead and get started with the most obvious necessity, which is a camera. Um, it's kind of a first basic thing to have if you want to make a photograph. So the good news is any analog camera should be usable for wet plate collodion. Generally speaking, if you can get film or if you can get a dry plate into it, you can find a way to get a wet plate into it as well. Now, large format cameras are the most popular medium for wet plate, far and away. Uh, simply due to the fact that a lot of us are shooting tintypes and amber types, which are direct positive images. And that means that whatever size plate you want to make, you need a camera that can accommodate the full size of that plate. The most popular size, especially for getting started, is 4x5. That's because A, 4x5 cameras are relatively inexpensive. They are, there are a lot of them in circulation. They're very plentiful, easy to get your hands on. And also it's a size where you're not spending too much money on each plate in terms of the chemistry and the materials required. That being said, there's no reason that you have to use a large format camera to shoot wet plate. Medium format, as well as even 35 millimeter cameras work just as well. Now the downside there, of course, is obvious. You're gonna have a smaller plate. However, A, that will get you a start, and B, I think it's worth considering the fact that most tintypes and amber types that are being made in the year 2020 are probably not being put on display anywhere. Um, I'm guilty of this myself. I have several boxes full of plates that sit in the filing cabinet and will probably never be taken out, except for maybe once or twice for the rest of my life, right? Most of us, I think we make a plate, we scan it, or we make a copy photo of it, we post it on the internet, and then we put the original away. So if your main audience is Facebook or Instagram or your online portfolio, you don't need to make big plates. Uh, a medium format or even a 35 millimeter plate has plenty of resolution for scanning. And due to the fact that clothing is a very slow medium, the extra speed that you get out of the lenses and the, less, the lesser magnification on the smaller formats is also a help. So if you don't already have a large format camera that you wanna use for wet plate, it's worth considering going smaller to start with. Uh, you can also use cheaper older cameras such as the Kodak Box Brownie. Uh, which is very easy to adapt for wet plate. In fact, you don't really even adapt it. You just cut your plates to size and then set them directly inside the camera. And those can be found for usually a few tens of dollars at antique stores and online auctions all over the place. Now, if you do use a large format camera, a common concern is, am I going to ruin my camera with silver nitrate? Because silver nitrate stains, it can also um, kind of rot away organic material, it can be nasty stuff that you don't want getting into your camera. So if you're shooting large format, the general answer is no, because the plate is going to go into a plate holder. It's not going to directly interact with your camera. So the plate goes into the plate holder, the plate holder goes into the camera, and while we do call it the wet plate process, a better name for it might be damp plate. So the plate should not be sopping wet when you insert into the camera. There should not be any drips of silver nitrate that is escaping from the plate holder. So a large format camera using plate holders, you should be able to keep the camera perfectly pristine. This is 
a 4x5 field camera that I've been using exclusively for wet plate for over a year now, and there is not a single spot on it from the silver nitrate. Now, if you're gonna use a smaller camera, um, medium format cameras, they mostly have removable backs. So you should count on quite possibly ruining whatever back you adapt to fit wet plates into, but the camera itself should be fine. 35 millimeter cameras are a different story. Uh, you're quite likely going to have to insert the plate directly into the camera. And in that case, the silver nitrate may cause some staining, potentially even some damage over time. For that reason, I would say don't use your grandfather's prized Leica for wet plate photography. But if we're talking about some cheap 35 millimeter camera you picked up at Goodwill, by all means go for it. Now, if you're gonna shoot large format, you're gonna want a plate holder. A plate holder plays the same role in wet plate photography that a film holder plays in film photography. It is just a light tight container that the plate can be loaded into in the dark room or dark box, and then it goes into the camera when you're ready to expose the plate. So I have here three examples of four by five plate holders. Just to give you an idea of some of the options available on the market right now. This is the Chamonix 4x5 plate holder. It is a very well polished product. I think Chamonix is the closest thing to a true industrial large format equipment manufacturing that exists in the year 2020. Uh, they make well put together, well designed products. And Chamonix holders are also generally on the less expensive end of the spectrum, um, just due to the fact that they build them in such volume. Now the main downside to this holder is that it does not hold the nominal size of the plate that you're gonna shoot in it. If you're shooting a four x five plate, you cannot fit a four inch by five inch plate in here. You have to take about a 16th of an inch off of each edge of the plate. For whatever reason, they decided to design this plate holder so that it would fit plates the same size as film negatives rather than the true full sizes. That is the main downside to the Chamonix holder. What I have here is a plate holder made by Anton Orlov and his business partner. And this is a plastic and metal plate holder. It is, I believe, CNC machined. It opens on the back with a latch. And it has a spring built into the lid to hold your plate down. This will accommodate full-size plates. Uh, they make them, have made them in 4x5, 5x7, and 8x10 sizes. These are more expensive than the Chamonix holder, but they, you should expect them to be a bit more durable, given that there is no wood in the construction to uh, fall apart with a prolonged exposure to silver nitrate, and it's just a generally sturdy product. Now, they don't regularly make these. I believe as of this recording, they're trying to put together some orders for another production run. So if you want one of these, you'll want to get in touch with Anton Orlov, whose contact info I will leave in the description, and just ask him what the situation is with new orders of his plate holders. And as a final option, what we have here is a 3D printed plate holder. This is a holder of my own design. This one is actually a reducing plate holder that allows me to shoot quarter plate size plates in a four x five camera. Uh, but I also make these for four x five, five x seven, and eight x 10 cameras. And if you would like, you are completely free to download this design, to print it for yourself if you have a 3D printer, or you can get someone else to print it for you. Um, also free to modify the design if you would like because I provide the CAD files as well. This is obviously not going to be as rugged or as well polished uh, a product as you would get from say Chamonix or from one of Anton's holders, but it is a very inexpensive option. And in my experience so far, the 3D printed plate holders have held up pretty well for me. As a final option, if you don't want to buy a purpose-made plate holder, you can adapt a film holder. And the way that works is you take the film holder, you cut the septum out of the middle, and you use silver wire to make little bridges across the corners that you can lay the plate on. 
that's not something that I've done myself, so I can't go into a whole lot of detail about it, but it is another option available to you if you want to shoot wet plate in a large format camera and you don't want to potentially spend a lot of money on a new plate holder. Now, aside from cameras and plate holders, you're going to need a material to shoot on. So, in this series, we're going to be talking specifically about tin types. What I have here is black trophy aluminum. This is just standard material that you would buy from, say, main trophy supply, which is, I believe, one of the largest trophy supply sellers in the United States. Um, these are both plates that I bought from Main Trophy. Main Trophy does a lot of business selling to wet plate photographers. Even though they are not a photography supply company, they will sell you aluminum and they will cut it to size. Now the trick of Main Trophy is that you're going to pay quite a bit of money for shipping. And if you're not making big orders, you may end up with a higher than necessary price per plate. Because there are other retailers who sell essentially the same plate, but they cut it to size ahead of time specifically for wet plate, and they will potentially not charge you as much in shipping. Uh, Bostick and Sullivan, I know I have gotten good deals from a couple of times. Uh, Modern Collodion also sells trophy plate for tin types. Unfortunately, I believe they're going to stop doing business soon, so by the time this video is released, that may no longer be an option. Lund, Photo Lund Photographic also sells trophy plate. Lund's plates are unique in that they're the only plate on the market I'm aware of with something other than bare aluminum on the back of the plate. Their plates have a white coating that seems almost plastic or rubber-like. It ostensibly helps silver nitrate run off the back. Some people have reported issues with Lund plates, potentially contaminating their silver baths and creating artifacts on their plates. I have used a handful of those plates myself, and I have never experienced any ill effects from them. So personally, I don't have a problem with them, but in, in the interest of caution, I have avoided using them since I've heard what other people have experienced. Now, aside from your material, your plate holders, and your camera. You're also going to want something to process your plates in. So I'm going to talk a little bit about darkroom equipment here. I'm not going to go into all of the chemistry equipment that you may want to use for preparing your chemicals uh, because I'm going to save that for the chemistry video which will be coming up next. But we will talk a little bit about the darkroom. So this is a standard plastic darkroom tray. It has ridges in the bottom that you can use to fish a plate out of. And this one, as you can see, is a little bit stained because I use this particular tray to catch developer when I'm developing plates. You're going to want a handful of these trays in a size large enough to hold at least one of the plate, plate sizes that you'll be shooting. Now, personally, I usually just buy these new from either B&H or Adorama, whichever one I can find them cheapest at at the time. You know, for 20 or $30, you can get enough plates to last yourself for a very long time shooting wet plate. If you're lucky, you may be able to find them at, say, a garage sale or a studio with a dark room near you closing down. And when that happens, sometimes people get spectacular deals on just big old piles of these things. But they're not terribly expensive to buy new if you have to. That being said, if you don't want to buy them new, Tupperware works just as well. Uh, none of the chemistry that should actually be going into your trays should include strong solvents. So any old Tupperware is basically fine. I have also used metal baking trays, uh, the kind that you would take to like a potluck, specifically as a basin for catching developer when I'm developing plates. I wouldn't use those for any other chemistry just because of the fact that anything metallic has the potential to leak sil or sorry, leach silver out of your, the rest of your chemistry while you're processing plates. Another thing you may want to consider in addition to your trays is a print washing tray. So this is a Patterson archival print washer. I think this costs about $20 or $30 from B&H. 
And this is specifically for washing plates. Well, it's built for washing prints, but it works just as well for plates. The nice thing about this is that it comes with a hose, uh, it hooks up to your sink, and it sprays water to the sides at the top of the tray, where it then circulates all around the tray, ensuring that you get a good, thorough washing of your plates. You can wash your plates in a regular darkroom tray, but it can be tricky to get enough water flow. If you're gonna wash in a normal tray, make sure you have plenty of running water going through for the wash. Uh, don't just use a trickle because the water won't really flow over the surface of the plates. That being said, if you can't afford it, I highly recommend just getting the archival print washer. It'll make your life easier and it'll keep your plates safe for years to come. Another useful bit of kind of chemistry containment are fixer and silver tanks. If you've ever watched wet plate videos on the internet, you've probably seen a fixer tank, or sorry, you've probably seen a silver tank, you may have seen a fixer tank. A lot of times they don't look like these. Uh, you may have seen them as kind of a big black wooden box with an acrylic tank inside, whereas what I have here are just plain acrylic tanks. They come in a lot of shapes and sizes, and they are not a necessary thing to have, but a very useful thing to have. What these are for is your silver nitrate, which will go in a pure black container. So this is just black acrylic. It has no open face. Once the plate's inside, it's totally light tight. And then fixer generally goes into a tank with a clear front. So why do you want these? Why may you not want them? Um, there's really not in my opinion, any reason that you would not want to use these besides price. So you can use trays for both silver nitrate and fixer. The silver nitrate tank is for sensitizing your plate. After you pour the collodion, you dunk the plate in silver nitrate where it becomes light sensitive. If you want to sensitize on a tray, things get a little bit tricky. So first of all, you're gonna need a way to get the plate into and out of the tray. You can drop it in generally without incident, but it's hard to control the way you can control dropping a, sorry, lowering a plate into a silver nitrate tank. The other thing is you have to keep it light tight. Uh, even the safe light in your dark room will fog a plate if you leave it out in the open for the entire time the plate is sensitizing. For that reason, on the occasions that I have had to tray sensitized plates, I have always gotten a bigger tray to put over the top of, the, top of it to avoid light leaks and completely turn the lights out in my dark space. That being said, it's easier if you just use the silver nitrate tank. The fixer tank is less important than the silver nitrate tank. So a fixer tank is essentially just a convenience um, you know, it doesn't provide much practical benefit, aside from the fact that if you have a field tank, sorry, a traveling tank, you can carry it around out in the field without spilling, without having to pour your fixer back into a bottle. And also just the fact that your fixer is not sitting out in a large open tray minimizes the amount of foreign contaminants that can fall out of the air and into your fixer. Now, as far as procuring tanks goes if you want to use a fixer and a silver nitrate tank. There are a couple of kind of common brands that make acrylic tanks. So Lund Photographics is by far my favorite maker of traveling tanks. Now the difference between a traveling tank and a studio tank is that a traveling tank, like the ones that I have here, is going to have a rubber gasket, sorry, a foam gasket in this plate, in this case, inside of the lid. And it's gonna have latches on the side, which will latch closed and keep the lid firmly in place. Once this is latched up, it should be watertight. Um, I have filled my traveling tanks with silver nitrate and with fixer. I've gone up hilly, bumpy roads with them. I put them in a wagon and taken them down miles long trails out into state parks. I've never had an issue with my chemistry spilling out of them. So these tanks are very good at containing what you put inside of them. Now, 
Studio tanks are similar, but they're going to not have the latches, and they're not necessarily going to have a gasket in the top of the lid. The expectation with those is that you will leave them in one place, ideally in your dark room, and you won't be moving them around, so it doesn't matter if they can spill. Now, traveling tanks are great working in the field. I also really like to have a traveling tank for my silver nitrate, even when I'm shooting in the studio, because it gives me the ability to pour my collodion outside of the space where I'm going to be developing my plates. So if I'm developing in, say, a small darkened closet, I don't want to pour collodion in that space. Uh, the fumes are going to get out of hand very quickly. A traveling silver nitrate tank allows me to pour outside or in a better ventilated room, and then with the plate safely contained in this completely light tight compartment, take it back into the dark room to process. The fixer tank, it is less important to have as a traveling tank. Um, I have traveling tanks for use in the field, but I do not, for instance, have a traveling tank in the 8x10 size for my fixer because I only shoot 8x10 in the studio and I just leave the fixer wherever I'm processing my plates. Uh, it's not something I have any need to move around. So, as far as brands go, Lund Photographics makes, in my opinion, far and away the best traveling tanks. There's another brand of tanks called La Rouge. La Rouge tanks are less expensive than Lund tanks, and they are still perfectly usable tanks. Um, if you're on a tight budget, I definitely recommend going with the La Rouge tanks. You're generally going to save a non-trivial amount of money on each tank. The difference between them is that the La Rouge tanks have, instead of this metal kind of bent steel kickstand that we find on the Lund tanks, they have an acrylic kickstand that just kind of pops out from the back. The, the LaRouge tanks also have smaller latches, which I have found less easy to operate one-handed while processing plates. The LaRouge tanks also come with separate dippers for lowering the plates into the tank, whereas on the Lund tanks, you're gonna have your dipper built into the lid. And they come in two styles, an acrylic dipper or these metal rods with a bend at the bottom uh, to hook the plate onto. Personally, I really love this metal rod style. Uh, you can unscrew the rods and screw them into different positions in the lid to accommodate different size plates. And to me, they just work really well and it's one less thing that I have to clean when I'm cleaning up my tank after a shoot. Now, when it comes to studio tanks, all of those factors are less important. So personally, I use Lund for all of my traveling tanks. However, for 8x10, I don't have a traveling fixer tank because I don't shoot 8x10 in the field. So my 8x10 fixer tank is a LaRouge and it works fine. Now there is another brand of fixer and silver nitrate tank that I can't even name because the brand doesn't really have a name. Um, you'll see these just kind of marketed as wet plate or collodion kits. Um, they come out of the Czech Republic and it's just a kind of wooden looking outer box with an acrylic inside. I highly recommend against buying those Czech tanks. They're very inexpensive. They don't work very well. Uh, everyone I know who has bought one, including myself, regrets it. I think I still have mine somewhere, but I've never used them because just unboxing them, it was immediately apparent that they were very flimsy products. So I recommend getting either a LaRouge tank or a Lund tank or buying a tank from another reputable wet plate seller. Uh, there aren't any kind of large retail suppliers off the top of my head that make tanks, but you may find people in collodion groups selling tanks that they make or you can even make your own out of acrylic uh, using acrylic cement if you want. So I think that about covers tanks. Now let's talk about drying racks. If you're going to air dry your plates after developing and washing them, you're gonna need a drying rack. And even if you don't do that, you're probably gonna want a rack to put your plates on after varnishing them uh, to give them some time to cure. 
So a drying rack can be fairly simple. Um, at its simplest, it doesn't even need to be a wet plate specific product. You can buy a bamboo dish drying rack and put plates on it. You can even just take a scrap piece of board and drive some nails into it in rows and then lean your plate against the nails. This is a small wooden drying rack that actually comes with that check silver nitrate tank and fixer tank kit that I told you about. And this is, in my opinion, the best part of that kit. Um, I have never used the tanks, but I actually got quite a bit of use out of this drying rack. I kind of wish they would sell just that drying rack on its own. Now, Modern Collodion also makes a purpose-built Collodion drying rack. It is a bit pricey. It is a good size drying rack. You can dry plates up to 8x10 and I think even a little bit bigger on it. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, uh, Modern Collodion is going to be going out of business, so you may not be able to buy those new. Um, still could be something to keep an eye out for secondhand, because they are good quality drying racks. As a final option, I also make a 3D printed drying rack design. Uh, this is something that you can download and print for yourself if you have a 3D printer. I also include the CAD files. It's very easy to rescale this because it is a parametric file. So if you want to make a smaller or a bigger drying rack, you can modify it, print it out, you're good to go. Um, the way this design works is it's just four pieces. Two sides and two platforms. So the entire thing breaks apart. You can store it or carry it around flat. And then when you're ready to use it, these platforms just slide into slots. on the insides of these side pieces. And right there you have a drying rack. This can take plates as small as say six by seven centimeters up to four by five through eight by 10. I've dried uh, five by 12 plates on this rack and found that it worked pretty well. You could probably even go a little bit bigger, but if you're gonna push it any farther than that, you'll probably wanna customize the design. Hopefully that will give you an idea of the things that you may need to buy and the things that you can potentially avoid buying to get started making your first wet plate photos. Now I focused primarily on the photography specific equipment today. There's going to be some lab equipment that you may want to acquire, and we'll talk some more about that once we start working on the chemistry. I'm also going to do a small follow-up video to this one, just discussing dark rooms, dark boxes, which you may want to either buy or build to allow yourself to shoot wet plate away from a dark room or in a space where you just don't have room for a dark room. Until the next time, thank you very much for watching, and best of luck shooting.